Tapping the trees of the farm is something we do at the end of winter. And then it's going to start, to, the sap is going to start to run when the nights are below frost and the days are above frost. And that's where the tree with all of its roots is, is putting the energy going to the top leaf of, its, of, the, of the tree. So the, the sap is coming up and by tapping it, we're collecting it. You know, the Native American, the First Nations that were here long before us, they were doing this for probably thousands of years and they're the one that showed the French, my ancestors, how to tap the trees. And these are, these are maple trees and they're located here in the eastern townships of Quebec, uh, in Maine and in Vermont. Little other places in Wisconsin and, and further down, but 80% of the world's maple sips production is in Quebec. So this is, this, these are our traditions. Um, my parents did not tap tree, but my grandfather did. And uh, a lot of people were doing it to make a living, but I'm not. We do the maple here at the farm just to do our yearly reserve and just to make sure that we spend as much quality time together with the family and with some friends. So it's really actually, it's a moment to get together and hang out. For me, the time of the year where we make maple syrup is such a great time. It's just like, uh, it's, it's just perfect because it's before the farming really kicks in. You know, we have, we have the winter uh, vegetables that are in the greenhouses and we have the nursery that is being seeded right now. We have things growing inside, but we're outside, we're doing the sugar. We're cutting the firewood for the sugar shack, but also the firewood for the house. And it's just like a perfect moment to hang out and do that and be outside before really the farming kicks in. And this is just my favorite part of the year. It's, it's really amazing and it's, it's really, you know, these are, these are my heritage as a French Canadian. Um, you know, doing maple syrup is, is who we are. And I'm really, it's really excited to do the maple syrup. I'll show you the sugar shack and the process as we go along here. So the evaporator is a pretty classical, ingenious tool and it works. It's, it's basically two different pans and it has a fire that is going narrower towards the chimney and the goal is that the water will go from one big pan and slowly going to trickle down into the finishing pan where the maple syrup is being done. And even, even I don't really understand why and how it really works, but it's really amazing. And these pans are like 70, 80 year old. So it, there's something very um, unique about their design. It's never been really changed over the years. And then the, the last part of it is the finishing pan when the sap gets to a point where, you know, 90% of its water content is lost even more than 90%, then it becomes to be more like syrup. And that's the reason why we can keep maple syrup is because it changes what it is and it becomes syrup and then it can keep uh, storage for, for many, many, many years. And so we need to wait until it's really to that point where it turns into syrup and then, and then we'll pour it out. And then that's eventually, probably I'll boil it back at the house a little bit and that's what we'll put in the cans. So pretty cool process, pretty unique. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Maple syrup, maple syrup alert. Maple syrup alert. It's what? Wow. Malade, hein? Là, on a fait du sirop. Ça, c'est le produit final. Ouais. So I really learned how to make maple syrup by, by actually doing it myself and also reading. Reading and that was before internet, obviously, and my favorite book is the Maple Sugar Book by Scott and Helen Nairings. And Scott and Helen Nairings, um, pioneers of Back to Landers in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. They wrote Living the Good Life, very inspirational book for a whole generation of people that were, you know, going back to farming, going back to the country life. But their book on maple sugar is really, it was my guide to book when I started. It really 
laid out the steps. And you know, now today, uh, sugaring is done using, uh, you know, tubes that, you know, go from trees to trees and it's more, it's more mechanized in a way if you want, but I still do it the old way. And the whole process brings me back to more of a slow kind of pace, even though it's industrious in the way that we're, we're doing things, we're moving from one step to the other. The whole spirit of it is kind of going back to how things were before. And I like that. And uh, yeah, it's just a special moment every time we do it, every year. It's just a beautiful time because First of all, it's being outside and being with the elements, but it's also being with friends. I have my friend Ben today. Ben is, you know, I spent two weeks at his surf camp this winter and then he just came back and then we're doing this. And Faret came with his, my son came with his girlfriend and then Modelaine will be there tomorrow with me. And my older girl will be doing it later on. It's just a, but it's a long process. like. Boiling is when you start to boil, you can boil for three, four, six, seven, eight, twelve, sixteen hours at a time. So it's a, it's a process. So people are in and out of the sugar shack, coming to the cabin, saying hi's, and then people are leaving. Other people are coming. So it's a, it's quite the journey, but I love it. It's amazing. I love it. So that's it for this week. I hope you liked the episode. The last part we saw was the final stage of making the maple syrup, which is putting it into cans to store it for as long as we want. And it's really amazing. Again, part of my heritage, so happy to be sharing this part of our season with you. And I hope you're well, I hope things are growing. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, it gives us the signal that you guys are into it. It gives me the signal that I should keep on producing these. And uh, that's it for this week. I'll see you next week. Hope you're well. JM out. Mm -hmm.